Hello Minecrafters! So you want to know how to build a zombie drop trap for experience. You've come to the right place. And I don't know why I went there. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go in and I'm going to show you an example of all of this. So let's just go down and the first thing I'm going to do is turn off the water. So, very quickly, yeah, yeah, let's just get rid of a few things here. Okay, I will just leave it right there for a moment. There. So, starting at the top, the white blocks. I use those to just indicate where the redstone is going to be. We'll talk about those. Um, we'll probably talk about those first this time. Okay, so yeah, we'll do that. The green area, if a player is anywhere in the green circle, it's actually a sphere, then the spawner can be active. If you're, not, if you're outside of that, it's not even going to turn on. The blue area is rectangular. It surrounds the spawner. If there are more than six zombies, or six or more zombies, the, z the spawner will not create any more. Basically, it says there's already enough zombies there. We don't need to keep going. Uh, the red area is a smaller area inside the blue area where zombies actually spawn. The yellow area, in my design, is just a little bit of a gap, and I'll explain that when we get there. And the black is what I've used to represent what the spawner would be. So, let's just take a look at this, shall we? Oh, I've been drinking, so my steps are not good. The red area is where zombies will actually spawn. Um, this is actually not so good. Let me get up, come back down. There we go. The black is where the spawner would be. Now, normally, it's going to be on the floor, right? Like this. Well, first thing you're going to do is get all that mossy cobble. You know you want it for decorating. So take it out. Take out the floor below it as well. I guess you could go even further down if you wanted. Uh, I haven't felt that it's really necessary, but it might be necessary to make sure that you've got two rows of solid stuff beneath you. Um, because, because we'll get to that in a minute. So the red area is from here to here high, right? S centered on the spawner. And it goes eight this way and eight the other way, this way. Now, 8 by 8 happens to mean that your center is right here, in between all four of these blocks. Right? That's not very useful when you know that your spawner is in this one. Um, for those of you who are really curious, you can do F3, and you can see that I'm currently looking to the east. Now I'm looking to the north, so that means that this is northeast, which means that this is my spawn block in that situation. Uh, so it's not hard to figure out. If you know that that's your spawner, then you can kind of map accordingly to say, all right, this is my red spawn area. What I do instead, though, is I just count out four each way. All right, so four, 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 and in this case, we got three. The fourth one would be right here. We'll get to this section in a sec. So, zombies will spawn here. Uh, I normally just keep stuff above the spawner uh, just so that nobody spawns right here um, because the goal is to get them out of the blue zone as fast as possible. So, the red zone's pretty small. The blue zone is a little bit bigger. It's 17 by 17 by 9 high. So, that works out to four blocks above the spawner four blocks below, that's why I said one, two, and you know, technically a couple down there, although if it's solid rock, then nothing spawns there, so you're okay. So that's the height, and it's basically eight in every direction. So that's what the blue indicates, right? Okay, so let's come back down. So job one, get the zombies out of the blue zone. The sooner that happens, the more zombies the spawner can actually create. So what I've done is I've automated a few things. First off, the lights. 
Here's my safety feature. I have one switch and I do that and when I do it's dark enough for the zombies to spawn. So, so long as it's off, then it's on. I know that doesn't make sense, but that's how it works. Turn on the lights, and now you're in maintenance mode. It's safe, okay? The water, I've got pistons, like I said, on this row, which basically spit out water. And if I hit the button again, it'll retract the water. How fancy. So, coming back down in here, back to the mechanics of it. The water's going to travel eight blocks, right? So it's going to stop right here. So then dig out another four blocks, one road lower. Put water source blocks along this entire edge, right? So that's just all water source blocks. Just let it flow freely. Put stairs on this edge here, all right? And we'll have signs in front of it. Now, if you want to do it on the cheap, you don't need to use dispensers. You can just place a water source block in each of these corners, and it'll do the job just as well. The water will flow from there. It'll flow from there. It'll meet and continue on down in there. All right? Same thing on this side. You don't need to use the dispensers. You can just line that row with water source blocks and let her flow. Um, it's you know nice if you can turn it off, but it's really not necessary. So whatever you like. So that's what it looks like off. I turn it on and you can see there they go. In a minute I'll talk about I'll do it now. Why not? So I'm a zombie, right? I'm not controlling my movements. I'm just going to free look around and show how this happens. So the water pushes me along. Now when I get to here, I am going to have to press the space bar to go up, but that's what your zombies are going to do anyway. They're going to do that because, oh, let me go back down just so I explain this a bit. So I've got a sign right here which prevents water from flowing back. And I've got a sign below it, if you can see it, and that prevents the water from, again, flowing back. So I've also got a missing block here so that this water is pushing me up against this edge, right? This prevents the zombies from coming back out. So the water's gonna push them in and it's going to hold them here, and they're going to drown unless they swim. Once they start to swim, well, it just alternates. Sign water, sign water, all the way up. And they have no choice but to swim. Because if they don't, they just start to sink, and so that's no good for anybody. So up they go. They swim. And, oh, I can't, I can't even get there. Oh, no, the water, it's pushing me. Even if I'm jumping... All right, now, as it happens, I happened to not have this one turned on. I made it fancy by putting in another dispenser with a button. Um, but you could just get away with a source block, like I said. So let's just close the gate. So, oh no, I'm a zombie. I'm trapped. I can see what's coming ahead. So sign behind it, water flowing. The stair, again, just pushes me up over. Oh, oh, oh no. Yeah, see, I was moving. That's why I didn't actually land. Let's come back up. Because there's one thing that I wanted to say. Oh. Oh. There. In here, let's come back down. A couple of blocks before where you drop, you want to bring it down to just too high. You don't want your zombies jumping up and then falling in because then they're going to be too high and they're going to take more damage than what you want. You don't want zombies to land and then die. You want them to land and be really hurt. So they come down, boom. They land here. They take a lot of damage. And now because, oh no, he's trapped. He can't get out. And he's dumb. He's a zombie. He doesn't know that he can punch down here at his feet. He only looks here, and he can't see anybody, but, oh, he's getting hurt. Oh, no, what's going on? He dies. That's the point. 
So they're so weak, you can just sit here and ha 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 ha, punch, 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 punch. That's great, but you're gonna die of hunger. It's very, very exhausting to punch all these zombies. So use a smash slash use a splash potion of healing. It'll work much better. Here, I actually got it out. So one splash potion on as many zombies as you got in there, they'll all die instantly, and then you'll be surrounded with experience orbs and you'll go from level zero to level thirty or higher in a minute. So what's that look like? Well, in order to tell, you pull up F3, like I've just done. And what you want to do is you want to look at the zombies and thunder. And then count three rows down and you'll see on the hard left it says E. In my case it says 0 or 1 slash 6. Well, the reason it said 1 is because there's a bat flying around and that's an entity. Well, all these zombies count as entities too. So when that number is up around 200 or so, you've probably got enough zombies. Go ahead, throw that splash potion. Have fun with it. So that's how you can tell when it's time to actually do this. Redstone, that's the last thing we have to look at. Oh, by the way, once you've actually done all that, reward yourself. Go enchant a book. Just send it for friends. Have fun. All right. Let's take a look at the redstone. This little contraption is where the button is for the water dispensers. The button drives this piston which pushes a redstone block down. It's a fancy solution. The redstone only needs to power some of these actual guys. So what, what are we looking at? Uh, a dispenser that gets power will also give power to the dispensers next to it. So I only have to do three of the dispensers to get a bank of nine. Right? So do the guy in the middle, I get these three. These three are covered by this row. And on this side, one, two, and I've actually got one behind this block too. All three of those fire off too. So if you put redstone on all of them, it does not work. So do it like I've said, and you'll, that'll be fine. So then I've just got another line. I needed a repeater so that it would actually get there the whole way. Hey, Bat, how you doing? To hit this one on the end. That way I could keep it all in the same secret. So... Who wants to see this in action? You do. I know you do. So we hit the button. It pushes it down, and then it retracts. The dispensers only need a pulse. They don't need the signal to stay on. But they do need a pulse for each action. Well, that's what that does. All right, so now that I've shown you that works, I just have you know, redstone coming around, as you can see, to get to the piston. If I didn't have to be up this high, I could probably come up with a different switch. Lights. Lights are a little bit different because they're a lever. They're not a button. So the lever is on, and you can see it just comes around. It hits a repeater so that it'll go the distance, and you just power the lights. You cannot run them on the inside block. You've got to be one away so that the redstone goes directly into the light. Otherwise, it won't work. It's that simple. Uh, these lights here, well, I did a little cheaty bit, and uh, I just stuck a redstone block underneath, which powers all of these guys. Pretty straightforward. Does the job. So stay within the green keep the zombies out of the blue. Uh, they're gonna start in the red, so push them along as fast as you can. Let's turn on the power, uh, the uh, water on, lights off, we're in business. It's now dark enough, the zombies will start, they'll flow through, they'll climb, they'll get pushed around, they'll drop, you'll punch them, 
you'll throw healing potions at them, you'll have all kinds of experience, you'll enchant a bunch of books, you'll then throw those on your armor, on your swords, then you go take on the ender dragon, and maybe a wither or two, and then you'll come back here with your buddies, and you'll turn off the water, and you'll turn off the lights, and you'll just see who can take out as many zombies as you can. Little arena match, that kind of stuff. It's Minecraft. It's a fun game. We love it. I hope you like this video. Give me comments. I'll talk to you later. All right, I'm out.